guys, welcome back for another video. I'm, my name is Jamie Leonard with TCG Unlimited, and today we're going to bring you a couple quick games uh, of a favorite deck of mine. It's actually really interesting. A um, little bit of a troll deck. Uh, I, we did a uh, post about this on our on our um, Facebook page, and we agreed to do a video. So we're going to play a couple quick games, see how good, how they go. Uh, but for today's video, we're going to be playing our expanded and uh, let's see if we can find it. Um, let's see, where is it hiding? It's gonna be in here somewhere. Uh, this deck usually does try to hide because it just it knows it's that good. Uh, hmm. Am I missing? Oh no, there we go. All right. So as you can see, we're gonna be playing our Sableye Garbodor deck. Uh, basically, it's just a giant troll deck. Uh, basically, all we're gonna do is we're going to try to stall out the game, run our opponents out of resources. Once we're once we feel safe, once we get our uh, essentially our infinite loop in play, uh, where they could knock out Sableye a thousand times, it won't matter. With our uh, Ace Trainer Life Do, they take one li one uh, less prize card, which means they take zero. Uh, so they can knock out as many Sableye as they want. It doesn't matter. They can't beat it. Uh, once we run them out of resources, once we feel safe, they can't do anything to us. We just switch into full mill. Uh, essentially, the deck makes it where you can never deck out. You can deal with almost any situation. Uh, in testing and preparation for this video, I found that uh, the deck kind of struggles with things like uh, Alolan Ninetales. Uh, sometimes with Sylveon. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can beat Sylveon. Uh, the problem with Sylveon is the fact that, I mean, essentially your opponent's just going to end every turn. Um, and then it... Sableye can deal with it, but it just kind of depends on what you draw when you draw it. Uh, in several of our test games against Sylveon, we just had really bad draws, uh, so we weren't able to all consistently take a win, uh, but the deck still performed uh, exactly as we expected it to. Uh, so we're going to see if we can't get a couple games. Uh, I'm not going to try to edit anything out because I want to give a, uh, a clear show of what the deck is capable of. Uh, at the end of the video, we'll uh, go into a uh, in-depth look at the deck, uh, some of the card choices I've made. Uh, it's it, this is actually it's a actually it's a um, it's an updated deck uh, with the new set Guardians Rising. So I'm I'm still kind of teching around with certain things, uh, but for the most part, I think this is like this the most stable version I can make it. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and hop into a couple games real quick and see how we would do. All right, so game number one looks like we're going to be uh, Psychic Fighting. It's probably going to be some kind of a Lucanorock. Uh, we can definitely beat Lucanorock. It's definitely something that's possible. Uh, the Psychic is more than likely just Tapu Lele, maybe Garbodor. Uh, we can beat Garbodor easy because Sableye just lets us put all of our items back into our hand. Uh, it's definitely not that hard to beat Garbodor in that situation. It's just it, It'll just depend on how quickly we're going to be forced to play cards. Uh, but we do get, uh, we get, we get an interesting start. We're going to get our Sableye, and we have any, we have our energy. Unfortunately, we're going to be going second, so there's a chance we could lose these cards, uh, if he plays an end, but we're going to, we'll see. We're going to get, he's going to have to mill, let's see, so we are, we are playing in. I'm going to let this card load. Uh, Machamp, okay. Uh, so maybe not... Maybe not exactly what I'm expecting, but it's probably something very similar. Uh, so we'll go ahead and see how it goes. I think what our, if he does not end, what I'm thinking about doing is attaching the energy using both of our trick shovels, uh, which will let us kind of play around with the top card of our opponent's deck. If we don't, if we don't want them having it, we can easily make them discard it. We got our float stone off that extra card, uh, which is great because that means we can always put it down later. Uh, and it is, uh, it is actually going to be Lucanera, but it's look like it's look like he's teching in a bunch of things. Uh, so we're going to just see how well this does. But he gets his Brooklet heal down, which is going to let him get all of his extra rock roughs in play. Uh, not that big of a deal because we're going to be looking to stick him on something that he can't retreat, uh, which is more than likely going to be this uh, Machamp if he ever evolves into the Machamp. Uh, so I think what we'll do is we'll probably start out baiting the Machamp. And uh, go from there. Uh, unfortunately, he did in, and our hand is not that great. Uh, our opponent d did get off to a pretty strong start. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to deal with it. 
Hopefully it won't give us too much trouble. We're going to definitely give it our best shot. So we're going to Trainer's Mail. Hopefully it's going to give us something we can use. Uh, unfortunately, it does not. Uh, what does he even play? Okay. So I can't do anything about that double colorless. Uh, and he'll be able to evolve on his next turn and knock us out. Um, so what I'm thinking is just do this. Now we'll go ahead and set up the Trubbish. So if we draw into anything like an Ultra Ball or anything like that, we can draw some cards. Uh, we do get our Zero Sick. Uh, so what I'm definitely considering doing, I think I will do that. So we're going to go ahead and play our Zero Sick, and it's going to let us take off this Special Energy. And then what we'll do is I... Uh, let's see. I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to Via Seeker... Get back the zero sick. Uh, because basically this is going to let us get both of our cards back in hand. Because we're going to junk hunt. It's going to let us get any two items we want back. Uh, so it's going to be the trainer's mail and the versus seeker. Uh, so it's basically like we didn't even play anything this entire turn. Uh, and the fact that uh, I'm going to make a guess. He's probably playing uh, multiple double colors. So he's going to be playing, definitely be playing the uh, strong energy. Uh, which we will just be able to continuously zero sick all of that energy off. And once he runs out of energy, we'll stick to the Lysander on the Machop. Uh, take that out of the equation. Once we do that, he won't have a lot of options. Uh, but basically, the goal of our deck, again, is just to run our opponent out of energy. Take away all of their options. And make it very hard for them to play against us. And see, now he's got the, now he's got the, uh, the Machoke in play. He's going to, pre and this guy lets you prevent any damage, uh, prevent all damage done to your bench Pokemon by your opponent's attacks. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't do any of that. So we are, um, we're pretty, we're pretty okay with this. We don't do damage at all. I mean, there are only, our only damaging attack is Confuse Rain and only does 10. And it's to the active. Uh, so we're not worried about the Machamp, or the Machoke in this case. Uh, the Machamp we're still not really worried about. Because all we're going to do is basically we're going to sit here, Lysander out the Machoke this turn, uh, and go from there. Alright, so he's going to Field Blower, which I don't I don't see the reason for that. Because we're just going to get it back. Uh, unless he has another N. Which is fine. Because the more cards we get to have, the more things we get to play with. Uh, and definitely, he's not as smart as some of the other players that I played in our uh, preparation for the video that played this deck. Uh, they definitely took a much more rounded approach to playing the deck. They knew they had to play around Lysander and stuff like that. And this guy is just not making smart choices. So we are going, we're going to punish him as much as possible. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to via Lysander out this Machop, or this Machoke, I mean. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll burn a Via Seeker, get the Lysander back. Um, and then what we'll do is we will Junk Hunt, get back our Trainer's Mail, get back our Floatstone. Uh, see, and that's and this is pretty much other than stadiums, which we don't run any stadiums. That's why I'm not afraid of Field Blower. Uh, field Blower is not going to help him in this game. It's not going to do anything. I'm going to let him burn them. Their items, most decks can't can't get back items unless they're playing the Sableye. Uh, so we're not really worried about that. And he can play again. He can play all the cards he wants. The more cards he wastes, uh, the bigger our chances are going to be to win this game. And he's going to use a Sycamore, which, uh, so we got rid of one Double Colos, one Fighting, uh, which is always good. All right, so now I think next turn, if he doesn't have a play, we're going to knock off this Double Colos. I'm perfectly okay with that. You get back both of your energies. That's perfectly fine because you, you, you only have so much energy recursion. Uh, I'm not too concerned. Although that, that is going to be the problem right there. Uh, him having switches does not help us in the least. 
uh, but it's okay because he did use the uh, Sycamore, so there was no in. Uh, if he takes a prize card at this time, it's fine. We're not too concerned. And now we're going to burn through a couple cards, punish our opponent for overextending, wasting resources. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to do this. Uh, I want the Enhanced Hammer. I have the very nice uh, Secret Rare Enhanced Hammer. I only have one, unfortunately. I want more, but we'll see. All right, so we're going to go ahead and Enhanced Hammer, get rid of that double colorless energy. Then we will... Hmm. I think what I want to do... I think what I should do is Lysander this Machoke again. Play our Shaman uh, for three cards. Ooh, okay, that did not help us very much at all. Uh, but what we can do... Uh, I don't know if I, I don't think I want to play it just yet. But what I will do is I will go ahead and use this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and check our opponent's deck. Uh, he has an energy, so we're going to go ahead and deny that energy. And then we will end our turn. I probably should retreat to the Shaman, but I, I just I don't see him having another switch and an energy. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna bank on that because he's gonna have to have double colors to do anything. Uh, he can he can use his GX attack, but it only does 50 for each of my benched, which I only have for the Shaman, so that's only 50. So he can't knock me out almost no matter what he does. Uh, so he'll probably use this, and that's fine, uh, because all we're going to do is probably use our uh, Tapu Lele to go get a uh, Sycamore, more than likely. Uh, but it looks like he's probably going to do us a favor. Okay, so he's actually going to just get the Sycamore, which is fine. That gives us access to the, our cards. Uh, again, he's going to be trying to find a switch. We get rid of another strong energy. Uh, so we've basically just erased the fact that he played the uh, special charge. Uh, plus we've got another one, so we're pretty much back on even ground. Now we just got to stop this Machoke from being able to tr to uh, retreat. And with a, uh, with a retreat cost of three, it's not going to be that easy. Uh, and I believe I believe the Machamp I saw earlier had four retreat. I could be wrong. Uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, but if he does choose to evolve into the Machamp, we'll definitely punish him for doing that. Um, all right, so again, this isn't quite going the way we want. So I feel like what we're going to do is we're going to play the Zero Sick and get rid of this Double Colorless Energy yet again. And then what we'll do is we will... Uh, actually, we're going to go ahead and uh, red card yet again. Uh, reset our opponent's hand. Because uh, if we keep doing this, it's it's just, it's simply, it's a simple trick. It's basically uh, take as many options away from your opponent. Keep making them waste versus Seeker. Keep making them waste uh, Shamans. Keep forcing them to bench things they don't want to bench. Uh, and again, he wants to play Field Blower. That's perfectly fine. Uh, we can get them back, no problem. Uh... Playing Field Blower against his deck doesn't do anything since we get all of our items back anyway. Uh, I mean, since we do run four Puzzle of Time, we do run plenty of cards to uh, essentially make it where we can play our, our deck efficiently. And, I mean, at this point, I kind of hope he plays another Double Colorless because that will be our third one that we get rid of. Uh, he does, in fact, play this, the, 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 the Double Colorless. So I think what we're going to do is via Seeker... Uh, get the zero sick back. Uh, he can shuffle away all... Okay, there's the Machamp and only has three retreat. Uh, which is still fine. Uh, because they'll never be able to attack. Uh, his atta uh, Machokes is two energy. I think the Machamp was three. I was paying more attention trying to see the retreat than I was his attack. Uh, but as you can see, he had no play. Uh, and basically what I think we're, we're going to do... 
Uh, at this point, what I think I, what I want to do is I want to play the Lele uh, to get our supporter, and I think that supporter is going to be Juniper. Uh, however, we're not going to be playing that Juniper this turn. Uh, what we're actually going to do is attach our double close to Shaman, uh, play our Via Seeker, get back the Zero Sick once more. Because uh, basically, if we, can, if we can deny special energy on that Lucanarok, uh, if we can do we can do these sorts of things the whole game, we're, we're just taking away our opponent's ability to play. Uh, and we're just going to make it really hard for them. Uh, so Sky Return does our 30. And then we're going to, I think what we'll do is we'll promote the Lele, uh, which is fine. Uh, Lele only has one retreat. I would much prefer that over the uh, the two retreat Trubbish, uh, since our float stone is gone. Uh, but again, that's perfectly fine. As soon as we can find our, as soon as we can find our um, Sableye, we're going to be able to start setting up again anyway. And as you can see, by just constantly forcing him to put you know, commit more and more energy to this Lycanroc, we're just going to continuously take away his ability to make plays. All right, so he's going to end us, which is a good thing, because now he's going to help us reset. Uh, we're going to get one uh, fresh card, but we're really going to get a fresh new hand. And see, he puts us in, uh, puts us into our perfect situation where we want to be. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and play down the Sableye. We're going to, because I think we may have to sacrifice a Trubbish here. Uh, we'll go ahead and do that, and then we're going to go ahead and put down our energy onto our Sableye. And then I think what we're gonna do is just end our turn here. Uh, we'll start making him find energy to try to retreat this Machoke and then just slowly uh, use our uh, Team Flare Grunt to knock off that energy. Uh, because even with that, that, that attack, and he'll only have uh, the additional 30, so 140. He's gonna have to two-shot our Lele. Uh, which I don't see him doing. All right, so he's gonna sick him more. And what this, and what he doesn't under, what this guy doesn't seem to understand, uh, is the more he plays sick him more, the more he plays cards, uh, the more he mills himself down, and makes himself very susceptible to our playstyle. Uh, so let's see, what do we want here? I think we want the trick shovel, uh, because at this point I think it's safe to assume that he's going to play that sick him more next turn. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to make sure he has as few cards as possible. Um, hmm. I think we're going to take away the Machamp because it actually can attack with double colors. And it's it's if it's not obvious that he wants to be playing that, I don't know what is. Alright, so we're going to play our Juniper, see if we can't uh, draw into some uh, Crushing Hammers. Unfortunately, no crushing hammers. He doesn't have any EXs. Uh, he actually does have the Shaman. So we're going to go ahead and put our tool onto the Shaman. That gives us options for later down the road. We're going to go ahead and evolve our uh, Trubbish. Uh, just to get them out of our hand, we're going to go ahead and evolve them both. Um, Caragoon's care, 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 glitching out a little bit. Uh, is there anything that we can super ride? Uh, yes. So we'll go ahead and super ride. Again, don't forget, guys, like I said, uh, well, since we're going to get all of these cards back anyway, it doesn't matter if we're kind of like halfway wasting them, uh, since we'll get them back for practically free anyway. And thanks to him getting rid of my tools, I don't have to worry about the Garbodor knocking out my Shaman's ability, which means I'm going to get a bunch of new cards. Uh, unfortunately, we still did not draw anything, uh, which is very bad for us. Uh, but we are going to get rid of another double colorless energy, and that, my friends, is always a good thing. Uh, but what I think we're going to do is we're going to pitch these two. Uh, do we have another shay? We do have another shaman. So I think at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to just continuously shaman. Uh, try to draw into our energy. If we can get find one more energy, we can retreat this Lele. And then next turn, we're going to start pumping out. Oh, wow. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. 
Um, I think what we're going to do is do that. And then I think what we'll do is this. Use two puzzles. Uh, get back our enhanced hammer. He has five cards in hand. And then I think what we'll do is we'll do this. Uh, because our we shuffled our energy back. Uh, so that's not going to help us. Uh, so what we'll do is I'll get our trainer mail. Or do I want... Do I want to go ahead and get... I think I want to get the AZ. No, because if, uh, if he ends, I won't have access to AZ. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll, get, we'll definitely get the mail. And then what we can do is we will go ahead and just... Enhanced hammer, get rid of that strong energy. We'll go ahead and train our mail just to get it out of our hand. Uh, we got our field blower, which is good. So we're going to go ahead and take that field blower. And then just because it can, we can, again, I feel like we will take this out of play. And then take the choice band away from the Lucana Rock he's trying to power up. Uh, makes it where you can't one-shot anything other than Shaman. And then what we'll do is we will just end our turn there. Uh, so let me let me check energies, see how close we are. Uh, see, even though we're not able to play our full maximum offense, uh, we've still got all of his DCs. We've got two, half of his fighting energies. Uh, and so now the only thing he's going to do is be able to slowly power up this Lucana Rock on the bench with just normal energies, uh, which is just, it's going to make him a big target. Uh, because now all we have to do is, all, all we're going to do is just, we're going to sit here behind this Machoke and let him go to town for us. All right, so he's missed his one opportunity. So we're going to get our AZ... Pull up our AZ, and then we're going to AZ this Tapu Lele. Get it off the bench, or off the out of the active. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put down another uh, Sableye. And then all we're going to do, simple enough, do this. We have all three of our puzzles. So I feel like doing this. And... I feel like I feel like getting our via seeker is probably a smart choice here uh, because if we assume he gets a switch, um, he'll get the knockout. Uh, but then we can just get an energy. We can use the double puzzles to get our Lysander and an energy. And see again, he's just not finding his cards. Uh, which is very good for us. Uh, because now all we're going to do is we're going to play the Via Seeker. Uh, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple turns to take out these easy prizes. Uh, get them off the table. Take away the Shamans. And if we can do that efficiently, uh, we pretty much win this game. And then we're just going to simply Junk Hunt. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get back... Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll get our hammer and we'll get back. He's got five cards in hand. He'll have six. I'm going to assume he's going to have to pass. Uh, so we'll get back our red card. Uh, so we're, at, we're at 14 cards. He's only at 12. Uh, so we've already got this game kind of in a situation where we can win. Uh, if he doesn't do anything this turn, I think we're going to burn our puzzles uh, just to get some more setup cards. And he does not again. Uh, but we do get another energy, which is good because we're going to go ahead and put that down onto our Sableye. Uh, we'll go ahead and roll the coin, flip the, flip the coin, whatever you, however you want to say it. Knock off another one of these energies. Which is simply at this point very devastating for our, our opponent. And then because he again did not make a play, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and red card, put him back down to four cards. Uh, again, I could have given him a better hand. I could have given him a worse hand. We don't really know. 
but I want to take away the opportunity as much as possible. Uh, so what we'll do is uh, get back to the Via Seeker and the puzzle in our hammer. Uh, basically, I, I'm, I'm kind of afraid of this um, rock rough coming down or uh, him evolving this because then he can just Lysander out one of our, or use the ability to essentially Lysander out our uh, Garbodor, uh, which would be bad. However, I don't think it is. I don't think it's a problem we're going to have to deal with. Uh, but we are going to go ahead, try to flip our coins. We did fail, uh, but I am going to play it safe because I don't want to. I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with that possibility. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do this to get back our our hammer. And at this point, we will get back the float stone. Uh, so we can go ahead and get our uh, Garbodor online, so he can't lie sander. Uh, he'll have to waste Versus Seeker. He'll have to waste the Lysanders out of his hand. Uh, take away those options. Uh, but we're, we are going to hit the Double Tails, which does hurt. Uh, but it's definitely not a bad situation to be in. Uh, because we, we we have effectively taken uh, taken him out, taken of our opponent out of the game at this point. Uh, because now not only does he need a third energy on that Lucana Rock, which we're just going to keep hammering away at uh, and literally just using our crushing hammers uh even if we have to flip a thousand coins it doesn't matter at this point um i mean at this point it's kind of more of uh how long does it take you to rage quit and that's uh, that's what this deck does essentially and that's what i've told um some friends of mine you do not play sableye with the intent to make friends you play sableye uh with the intent to have a good laugh and to make some enemies uh, because that is definitely what Sableye does. It makes enemies. Uh, well, we'll go ahead and Junk Cut again. And I know you're probably wondering... Uh, no, we don't, want, we don't want the Enhancer. I know you're probably wondering why we're not getting back our other puzzles. I prefer the puzzles stay in the, in the drop zone or in our graveyard. Uh, because if they end, we can completely lose access to them. And we don't want to lose access to our double puzzles. Uh, until I'm sure that he's out of in, until I'm sure he's out of uh, versus seekers. So he's only used two via seekers. He's only used one switch. Uh, I most most builds I've seen have run uh, at least two switches. Um, but that's again that's just what I've seen. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and put him back into a four card hand yet again. And. We'll, we will just essentially, what we're going to do is we're just going to keep doing this. Uh, get back that. And then what I think we'll do is start getting our trick shovel. And then basically what we can do at this point, until we get him into the, what I like to call the death turn. Uh, we'll start using our trick shovels to essentially look at the top card. If it's a card that he can't play, or it's a card that doesn't do him any good, uh, we'll let him keep it. If it's a card that helps him, we'll mill it. Um, but for the most part, that is our strategy at this point. So we're going to go ahead and get down our energy. I have forgotten about that other Shaman. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that Shaman. So we're going to AZ. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and do this. Miss on the puzzle. Play the AZ on the Shaman. Uh, but I'm going to hurt him. I'm going to hurt him real quick. Uh, because he is still playing energy, and I don't like that. Uh, so we're going to get back both of those. And basically, that's all we're going to do is we're going to sit here and just punish him uh, until we either win or he quits of his own free will. Um, this is probably one of the times I am grateful that they took the, uh, the public chat out of this game because before, uh, this deck earned you a lot of hate. Uh, this deck definitely... You just did not want to have to play against this if you did not, didn't have to. You would catch a lot of flack for hurting, uh, for playing this kind of a deck. Uh, but here we'll, we'll, we'll uh, prove my point. So Trick Shovel is going to reveal our, uh, his EXP share. Uh, again, I'm not knocking anything out. So I'm going to let him have that EXP share because it doesn't further his gameplay. And then basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here at Junk Hunt again. Uh, get back our double puzzles. Uh, because as long as we're doing double puzzle, we can always get back any two cards out of our discard. 
Uh, so as long as we get back two puzzles, it essentially equals any two cards, uh, no matter what the situation is. And basically, uh, we know he's drawing the EXP. We know he has to draw an EXP share. Uh, so basically, all we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead, double puzzle again. We're down to seven cards. We're going to have to start watching ourselves. Uh, but we're going to get that, and we're going to get our trick shovel. And then what we'll do is hammer, get the hammer, shovel, shovel reveals, Lucanorock. I will let him have the Lucanorock because it's turned off with Garbodor, uh, so that does not hurt me. Uh, but what I am going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and burn this Ultra Ball. I'm going to discard both of these Shaman. Uh, so that's two Shaman in our discard pile. We'll go ahead. Uh, actually, I don't think we're going to need this Sableye, so we're going to leave it alone. Um, and again, all we're just going to do, we're going to sit here, Junk Hunt, uh, get back of our double puzzles, and end our turn. All right, so basically now that we're getting uh, to where we're low on cards, basically all we're going to do is start, we're going to start junk hunting back our Ultra Ball, uh, junk hunt back our Super Rods, and we'll basically Ultra Ball away energy, excess Pokemon we don't need, uh, do all of that, and basically what that's going to do is it's going to let us, uh, it's essentially it's going to let us make sure we, we're in a good spot. But basically what I want to do here is I want to get back the crushing and I want to get back uh, this super rod. Uh, let's see, do we have, we have three, yes, we do have three things that can be shuffled back. So getting back the super rod is fine. Uh, our game is a little uh, glitched. Please do not fail. Please. Um, so guys, just hold on a second. We'll try to get get this sorted out. Uh, I'm probably going to be punished for doing this. Uh, hopefully, hopefully not. Hopefully, it's going to get fixed. Please, please get fixed. Please get fixed. Okay, so we okay it it fixed. All right, so we're gonna super ride, put back both of our shaman and our bonnelby. See, basically what that does is it adds three more cards to the deck, and makes it where we can easily play out our hands. Uh, now that we got our puzzle, now that we got our hammer back in hand, we don't have to use it until he plays energy. So now he until he commits to energy. All we're going to do now is sit here uh, and basically sit back and let our deck do its thing. Uh, we'll start getting back all of our trick shovels. And once he gets to uh, the death zone, which is essentially what I like to call it, uh, that point where they're at enough cards where I can just um, use puzzle to get back trick shovel after trick shovel after trick shovel and get them down to that zero cards, then we'll go. We'll switch into full mill. We won't worry about trying to control their the, their deck anymore. Uh, I mean, at this point, I mean, all nine of those cards are going to have to be energy to even stand a chance. And I just don't think they are. I think he's basically just going to play the long game at this point, uh, which is fine with me. I wouldn't recommend playing that against me uh, because I can always counter it. And so basically that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to start playing for the long game. Uh, we're going to play it safe a little bit because I do know he has two versus Seeker. Uh, they could easily still be prize. He only has managed to take one prize card. Um, so see, we're going to draw our Shaman again. And basically what we're going to do again, we're going to just Ultra Ball to Shaman. We will not take anything. We'll just simply let it go. Uh, we'll Sableye, Junk Hunt... Uh, take back our two uh, ch trick shovels and let that be our turn. We have seven cards. There's no way we're going to deck out just yet. And at this point, I think we're just in full mill mode. 
Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to start making our opponent regret playing this game. Oh, we drew another Ultra Ball, so I don't have, I don't, I'm not too, like, I'm not too scared of uh, that being an issue now. Uh, so we're going to go ahead, uh, take, and we're just going to start, we're going to go ahead and go into full mill mode. I'm going to play it risky. Uh, we'll just go ahead and start playing that game. Uh, just mill everything they have. I kind of almost want him to draw that Lucan Rock because it won't do anything. Uh, but it, I don't think it's going to do us any good. Uh, and again, I think what we're going to do, I think what we're going to do is just, we're going to take the Crushing Hammer. Uh, there's no reason to take anything else. We can always draw it. Uh, so we're down to five cards, and then what we'll do is we'll Junk on again. Uh, we do have our Super Rod in hand, so we're not worried about that. So we'll just get back our two Trick Shovels once more. And basically, he's at two, uh, four cards uh, after this turn. Uh, I'm guessing he's going to play for the long game. Uh, more than likely, he's going to he's going to try to timer stall us, which is uh, perfectly fine in my opinion. Uh, because what my opponent doesn't know is that I think we have game. I think this is game right here. Yeah, this is game. So we're going to go ahead and be polite. We're going to say, well played. We got played. Uh, so game number one, guys, is in the bag. All we had to do now was just play a double puzzle, get back our trick shovels again, and uh, just go to town once more, knock out those two final cards. In our turn, he can't draw. We win. Uh, so I, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed game number one. Uh, we probably, since that game went so long, we'll go ahead and include game number two uh, on a second video, on a part two. Uh, so if you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure you give this video a like. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, subscribe for all future videos. Uh, if you guys would like to see a certain deck, a uh, certain build, I can't promise I'm going to have all the cards because I'm not some pro, I'm not on here all the time. Uh, you know, we are a business, we do have other things we have to do, we don't, we don't get to just play games all day long. Um, but we do really enjoy doing the YouTube stuff, we do enjoy interacting with all of our viewers. Uh, so if you guys do want to see a specific deck or do want to see a specific video on uh, any kind of like set reviews, box openings, anything like that, uh, just leave us a comment. Uh, we check our comments pretty regularly. So anything like that you guys want to see, just let us know. And if it's something we can do, if it's something we can uh, try to work into our schedule, we'll definitely work that in. Uh, but again, guys, thanks for watching. I'm sorry again for the long video. Uh, but playing Sableye Garbodor, it's going to be that way. Uh, but we'll go ahead and go into our little bit of our... Uh, uh, we'll go ahead and go into our uh, deck real quick. And I'll explain kind of some of our uh, card choices. Uh, we'll go ahead and do it in this video just because I don't... I don't. I mean, after the, I mean, after two games, you kind of get all the cards. And maybe if I do it in part one, uh, you see all the cards. You see what they do. Uh, when you're watching game number two, you'll see kind of, you'll be more, uh, you'll be a little bit more versed in the deck itself. All right, so we're going to go ahead and, and of course this guy, you know, this kind of gives you an idea of all the decks I have. Uh, kind of thrown together. Some of them are better than others. Don't judge. Uh, but we'll go ahead and I'll pull it up. Full view. Uh, so if we can't, yeah, we'll go ahead and get it like this. All right, so uh, to start off our, uh, the, our, we run 13 Pokemon, and this is, this is, th the 13 is kind of, you can play around with that number. We choose to run three Shaman. Uh, for you guys that don't have that kind of a budget, um, you can definitely run two, but you're not going to get away with more, with less than two. Uh, you have to be able to draw cards consistently, uh, being able to refill your hand, look for your missing pieces. You have to do that pretty regularly. Uh, now, the full arts and all that, you don't have to have naturally. You can always you play the normal ones. Uh, but I don't want to make this too long, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so our first choice, Bonnelby. Uh, with his uh, Ancient Trait Barrage, he gets to attack twice per turn. Uh, he's really good. He goes really well with the deck. He's our mirror match kind of win condition, uh, especially against any kind of mill deck, really, because Bonnelby basically lets us... Uh, 
shuffle the top two cards of our, our any actually shuffle any two cards of our discard pile back into the deck. So it's any two cards and it's for one energy. Or say you want to go turbo mill, um, which is basically what we we're going to do in that last game. If our opponent had uh, four cards instead of going down to two, we would have just swapped to Bunnel B because his first, first attack, Burrow, for again, one energy, discard the top card of your opponent's deck. You just retreat out of Sableye for one, attach energy to Bunnel B, let him mill an extra two, and once you're safe, you just let Bunnel B do all the last second uh, cleanup, essentially. And at 60 HP, he gets knocked out pretty regularly, but again, you're saving him until that last turn anyway. Uh, your opponent wants to burn a Lysander, let him. I mean, yeah, sure, you take a prize. The fact is, you're not, I mean, this deck, you're not, we're not going to give you an easy two card prizes with the EXs. Uh, we do play our AZ, so unless you're one shotting them, you're not taking prizes very easily. Uh, and that's that's a good thing. So it doesn't really matter what their HPs are. Uh, I kind of prefer the 70 HP just because it stops a lot of these newer uh, 30 damage hits. Uh, you survive three turns instead of two, but Bunnelby is still great. Uh, the retreat's not so great. Uh, weakness to fighting, especially with the Lucana Rock like we were just playing, uh, definitely is a problem for us. But again, as you saw, we, we, got, I mean, we got stuck on our Trubbish for several turns and we're fine. Uh, or and our shaman and our tabu lele so we were fine uh so but again just it's kind of our your get, get out of jail free card uh again shaman not much to say you play him onto your bench draw tf6 uh one retreat which is fine uh sky return for two put him put him back put shaman back into your hand and all cards attached to him uh so it's good in case you just need to get him out of off the field and you don't have az uh, but here we are with our main card, uh, Sableye. Again, a 70 HP, which is much preferable in this in these scenarios. Uh, he can take three 30 damage hits instead of just two, like Bunnelby. He has no weakness, no resistance, so there's nothing that's going to get a cheeky little one-shot. Uh, or possibly not even a two-shot, depending on what our opponents play. Uh, so we don't have to worry about anything like that. He only has the one retreat, which is ex excellent. Uh, both one energy attacks for Colos. We have Confuse Ray, which does 10 damage. Uh, flip a coin of heads of the defending Pokemon is now confused. Uh, that's cool, but 90% of the time you will never use this. I've only used Confused Ray twice in the entire time that I've had this deck built. And one of those I flipped a Tails, so I've only had one successful Confuse Ray. But most of the time what you're doing is you're just Junk Hunt uh, for one Dark Energy put two item cards from your discard pile back into your hand and it's any two items so via seekers crushing hammers um trainer's mail ultra ball it's anything you need most of the time you're going to be looking for your puzzles if they're there uh if they're not you're just getting whatever you need via seekers get back the supporters uh so essentially you turn sableye into saying get anything that's not a pokemon back into your hand essentially as long as the cards are in your discard so it can be kind of tricky to make to uh make sure that everything you need is in your discard but it's still not still not impossible it's still a really fun deck it still plays really well uh, again one of our updates from guardians rising tapu lele uh, before guardians rising we were playing the one copy of uh, jirachi ex uh, which does the exact same thing as tapu lele when it enters the field go, search your deck for any supporter add it to your hand and since Lele does that as well, we choose to play Lele over Jirachi because Lele has no weakness. It also has no resistance, but it also. But the main thing here is it has no weakness. Uh, Jirachi has a weakness to fire and only having, I think it was 90 HP. Uh, Volcanion, you know, any any decent fire deck just one shots Jirachi. Any decent EX one shots Jirachi. Uh, but now with our Tapu Lele GX at 170 HP. Uh, and the fact that it's psychic, so it gets around the uh, the ability lock Wobbuffet. Uh, Lele is just a great card. It's definitely a much better card over Jirachi. Uh, with its energy drive, you have like a miniature Mewtwo. You have like a miniature Eagle, uh, Eagle Tall EX. Anything that does damage based on the number of energy on both active. Uh, tap, uh, Lele can kind of fill in that slot. So it's actually a good attacker. 
Uh, but you're mainly using it for, you know, to go get in. You're using it to go get AZ, uh, Zerosic, uh, Juniper. You're using it for those reasons. You're not playing it to for an attacker. It can be, but you're not more than likely doing it for those reasons. Uh, but we also like Lele because it has no weakness, which means you're, you're going to have to put in a lot of work to one-shot this. Uh, with a single retreat, uh, Lele is very good because you don't have to worry about trying to get stalled out. You run enough energy where that's not an issue. Uh, now on to probably the, like one of the more uh, controversial parts of the deck with Trubbish. Uh, we're not really worried about his attack here, but you're going to run the Trubbish. And I suggest a 2-2 two -two line, uh, not more. Uh, I did forget to mention the numbers on these. So uh, like I said, three Shaman, you don't have to. Uh, absolutely four Sableye, no more, no less. Uh, you really only need the one Lele. You can run two if you have two. Take out one Shaman for a Lele if that's what you want to do. Uh, but I recommend two Trubbish, two Garbodor. And Garbodor, this Garbodor is essentially the backbone of our deck. It saves us in a lot of situations. Uh, with Garbodor, like in that last situation, he couldn't try to Lysander stall with uh, Lucanorok's ability. Uh, because the minute it comes in play, it has no effects thanks to Garbotoxin. As long as Garbodor has a tool, and a tool is an item, so our, our boy Sableye can get our, all of our tools back. Uh, so we'll always have access to our Float Stone no matter what our opponent does. And just like in that game, he wastes two field blowers trying to get rid of the float stone, and all we did was just get them right back for no cost, essentially. Um, but our next card, Crushing Hammer, flip a, flip a coin of heads, discard an energy attached to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Uh, great card. It, 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 I mean, you can flip tails all day long. I mean, eventually you're going to hit a heads or two. Uh, but it is a great card. We only run it at two because we just don't need more than that. Because our main energy denial is going to be Team Flare Grunt with Zero Sick for special energy. Uh, but our next card is going to be Enhanced Hammer. I recommend the one. You can run two if you want to. Uh, if you think that you see them a lot of more special energy. Special energy is becoming more and more popular now. With Guardians Rising, with Sun and Moon. Uh, the use of Double Colorless, the use of fighting uh, strong fighting energy those kind of things are becoming more useful again uh, so enhanced hammer is picking up in popularity again uh, especially like in the uh, decidui decks that want to run rainbow energy with jolt with like jolteon tech and stuff like that but we only really need to see one because with sableye again we can just junk hunt and get it back uh, we can use our double puzzle of time to uh, get it back so our next card, again from Guardians Rising, Field Blower. Choose up to two in any combination of Pokemon tool cards and stadium cards in play, yours and your opponents, and discard them. So this card's great. It's a counter for uh, your opponent's stadiums, their tools. Uh, but let's say someone uses uh, this card right here. Let's say someone, you know, slap this, slaps this down on your Shaman and you need to Sky Return, uh, but you don't have a third energy. But, and what Headbringer does is, uh, the the EX that this card is attached to, all of its attack attacks cost one colorless more. Uh, so it's just kind of a headache card to get around because your decks are essentially calculated for perfect math. And if that math is thrown off even by one energy, it can throw decks out of whack. Such as like for Shaman, you're, you know, most players are going to be used to the double colorless sky return for 30. And then just play the, the double colorless onto something the next turn. Uh, but with Head Ringer, you slap it on a Shaman, now his Sky Return costs three, and your opponent's math is off. Now it's going to take him two turns to get that Shaman out of the active uh, instead of one, and that second turn might could easily be the difference between uh, wasting a turn trying to kill the Shaman uh, and not getting the two prize cards, or being able to knock it out uh, in two turns and taking that prize, or the two prizes. Um... So it's definitely a good card, uh, but it gets rid of your, your opponent's choice bands, stuff like that, harmful stadiums, you know, silent labs, stuff like that. Uh, now the true the true hidden gem of the deck. Everybody loves this card still. Uh, I kind of saw it falling out of favor for a bit, and then now it just kind of blows up again. Uh, Puzzle of Time, you may play two Puzzle of Time cards at once. 
Uh, if you played only one copy of Puzzle of Time, look at the three cards of the top of your deck, put them back in any order. That alone is a great effect. I mean, that alone is enough to play one puzzle. Uh, in Sableye Garbodor, it's fine if you want to play one of them. If you're going to Sycamore uh, or Juniper and you want to, if you need to pitch one puzzle, not a problem. You've got Sableye. But what we're really using it for is the two cards. And it says if you played two cards, uh, two puzzle of times, uh, put two cards from your discard pile into your hand. And it's any two cards. So as you guys saw in the last game, that was trick shovels. It was via seekers. It was all the things that we needed. Ultra balls. So, I mean, just anything and everything you could possibly want. As long as you're in your discard pile, it can go right back to your hand. So that's including your Pokemon. Uh, and most time the night where you know we may have to use a turn on puzzles to get back uh, our Sableyes if one or two get knocked out uh, it's always it, it you know it happens uh, but for puzzle time must uh, our next card is definitely a card that helps us fight a lot of uh, bad situations a lot of tough situation uh, red card your opponent shuffles his or her hand into his or her deck and then draws four cards since this is an item card, it's cool that the fact that you can, uh, you know, if you have to take a couple mulligans at the start of the game, your opponent gets all these extra cards. You can easily, if your hand's okay, you can easily just slap down that red card, sh um, force your opponent down to four cards, and then you can, since it's an item, you still have your supporter. So that's still a Juniper, that's still, you know, AZ, that's still anything you want instead of having to waste an, uh, an N. And if you can get around to having to waste your supporter for the turn just to try to research your opponent's hand is great. And the fact that red card forces your opponents down to four cards is, is also great because it's less than end gives at the start of the game. And it's kind of cool for late game if your opponent is, you know, only has like one or two cards. You can play red card to make them draw, essentially draw an additional two cards. So you're a little bit closer to that deck out. So it has multiple functionalities. Uh, it can mess up your opponent's math. It can mess up your opponent's tutors. Uh, this, I think, like this card will be, be like the centerpiece to Sylveon counter uh, because since you're just going to junk hunt every turn, you can make sure you can just get this back every turn, and it doesn't matter how many times they magical ribbon. You're just going to toss that hand back, and you still get your supporter. So there's no downside to this card whatsoever. Uh, so our next card is our safety net, our super rod, two super rod, or how many is it? I think we're playing two. Yeah, two super rod uh, is all you really need just to get all your energies back, all your Pokemon back. Uh, we play two just in case one gets prized. You all, I mean, if you lose access to super rod altogether, uh, and you're not, and your opponent's not being just silly and just drawing a whole bunch of cards. You will deck out before your opponent because you just don't have access to Super Ride. Uh, because the minute your opponent realizes you're not playing su the Super Ride correctly, you're not setting up, you're not being cautious against it, uh, they're not seeing it get Trainer Mail, uh, they're not seeing it come off the deck from Trainer Mail or anything like that. Uh, that you know That's usually a clear red flag to them to start playing slow, not to deck themselves out, and to, then just let you burn yourself out. Uh, so your best bet is like, you know, start of the game, go ahead and ultra ball for something and then kind of look at your numbers in the deck just to see what you have, what you don't have access to and kind of go from there. Uh, so yeah, four trainers mail, just kind of a standard for the deck. Look at the top four cards of your deck. You may reveal a trainer card uh, you find there, uh, except for, uh, except for trainers mail, put it into your hand, shuffle the other cards back into your deck. Uh, so again, it just, you know, with all these amazing items that you have access to, Trainer's Mail just kind of gives you whatever you kind of need, depending on the situation. It can whiff, but nine times out of ten, with as much draw power as this deck has, uh, you're not going to whiff on the, on these draws. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Uh, now, uh, again, our kind of our key card, uh, Trick Shovel. Look at the top card of, your, of either player's deck. You may discard that card or return it to the top of the deck. So again, you can stall out your opponent by forcing them to draw cards that you know for a fact aren't any good. And then you can also use it to mill out your opponent. But the thing is, it also says either player. So you can use it on yourself at the start of your turn or during your turn, especially like in the early game, if your hand is bad, you can trick shovel, use it on yourself. Look at the top card of your own deck and discard it if it's not something that helps you. 
Uh, so this card has amazing versatility. Uh, moving on, we run four Ultra Ball. Uh, just pitch two cards from your hand, any two cards you want. Uh, search your deck for any Pokemon, put it in your hand. Not much to say there. Uh, run four just because you're going to need it to, you know, to pitch the useless guys from your hand. Uh, and at times even pitch energy just for you to super ride it back into the deck. As long as you really have Ultra Ball, Super Ride, Energy, you know, Extra Shamans, and Puzzles, you can never deck out. I mean, it's just a great little loot that you can just exploit. And it's very hard for your opponent to disrupt it. Uh, four versus Seeker. Really not a whole lot to even say. Put a Supporter card from your Dearest Card Pile back into your hands. And see, so and as, as you saw, I guess, saw in the very first turn... Uh, on our very first turn in that last game, we used the Via, uh, the Via Seeker to get back our Zero Sick. And basically, we just kept using that trick to play the Zero Sick, use the Via Seeker to get back the Zero Sick, junk hunt the Via Seeker back to our hand. So this is essentially, we didn't even play Zero Sick. I mean, we just had a free turn. We got to get rid of an energy for free. I mean, who doesn't like getting rid of energy for free? Uh, so our next card is AZ. Uh, AZ is a wonderful card. Uh, put one of your Pokemon into your hand. All cards attached to it go to your discard, uh, which is fine because m most of the time the only thing you're actually going to lose is uh, you know, one energy. Uh, but for the most part, you're using this to target anything that gets Lysandered up that you can't retreat, uh, like Garbodor or um, Tapu Lele if you don't have energy, Shaman if you don't have energies. Uh, it's just there as uh, like a safety net system kind of thing. Uh, this card can get you out of a couple, uh, like, uh, if your hand's bad, you can Ultra Ball for Lele. Uh, get AZ to pop the active back to your hand if it's something you don't like. Uh, so it definitely, definitely has its uses. Uh, we run our one Hex Maniac to turn off abilities. It's like our second, it's our second Garbodor. I've considered taking it out, uh, taking it out, but I like this card just in case our Garbodor isn't online. Uh, thanks to our Versus Seeker loop with Sableye, uh, we can essentially use our Versus Seeker, get back to Hex Maniac every turn forever if we need to, and just Hex Maniac for the win indefinitely. Uh, your opponent doesn't have access to abilities, they can't win. Uh, I, there we, I did play a game a little while back where either I Hex Maniac every turn for the entire game or I was going to lose. Um, I want to say it was against a Rayquaza deck. It was basically using the Electric to supercharge the energy from the discard pile back to the uh, to the Rayquaza, and you just use Hex to keep denying that ability. Can't win if you can't attach energy from your discard. Um, what was it? Two? No, just the one. All right. So one Lysander. Switch one of switch your opponent's bench Pokemon with his or her active, and it's your choice. So you can get anything on their bench to the active. And that's what we did in that last game. We pulled up the Machoke and we forced it to stay there the whole game. We punished our opponent by playing Pokemon onto their bench. And that's essentially what Lysander can be. Uh, usually you use, you're, you normally under normal circumstances, you're using Lysander to pick up a target off the bench that's already got damage on it or a problematic target that you want to knock out. Uh, but in our case, we want Lysander to bring something to the active that we can knock out extremely easy. Or uh, not, not actually not, not even knock it out. My bad. Uh, we're actually just using Lysander for stall tactics. We're putting something in the active that has two or three retreat, and then we're just denying energy, denying energy, denying energy forever. Uh, even if they have the energy already on it to retreat it, it's still you know two energy gone. Now they have to put two more energy on it the next turn, two more the next turn, two more the next turn, and we force your opponent to keep blowing through their energy just to retreat. Uh, so Lysander provides a very good uh, stall strategy. I keep forgetting to look at these numbers. <laughs> uh, so forgive me, guys. Uh, one in. Each player shuffles his or her hand back into the deck. Then each player draws a card for each of his or her remaining prize cards. Uh, pretty much in, basically, for Garbodor, or for Sableye Garbodor, basically says shuffle your hand back, draw six. Uh, since we don't take prize cards in this deck, in basically says draw six. If your opponent has burned through a lot of their resources and tried to go wide trying to take easy prizes uh, burning cards just to try to get one prize knockouts uh, again you let them because ends going to hurt them later on in the game that way you're not worrying about uh, having to red card 
uh, because if they're down at one prize and puts them at one instead of four. So uh, to, to a point, red card is not as good as N because red card doesn't help your hand. Uh, but N can definitely save you in a couple situations. I haven't, I don't think I've been in a situation where N was like crucial. Uh, but again, we only run the one because we have essentially infinite versus seeker. Uh, so we'll always have access to N. We'll always have access to any of our uh, supporters. So again, that's why we only run two Juniper uh, instead of the normal four. Uh, simply because you have the option of versus seeker. Uh, but Juniper just says discard your hand draw seven. So it's just a hand refresh. Uh, usually you, you can burn through your deck pretty fast and you don't have to worry about it because of the, the loop. Um, the only thing that we run uh, absolute sets of are just our tech cards. Uh, but our supporters are pretty lenient. Um, two Flare Grunt, Team Flare Grunts. Uh, discard an energy attached to your opponent's active. As you guys saw in the last game, he kept attaching energy to the bench. And unfortunately, Team Flare Grunt can't hurt that. That's why I couldn't use the Team Flare Grunt. That's why I kind of kept trying to hit the uh, the hammers. Uh, and we don't have any way to pull anything to the active and Team uh, Flare Grunt in the same turn. So basically, you just kind of have to judge, do I need do I need hammers? Do I need to Team Flare Grunt? Uh, so you just kind of have to choose that decision based on that moment. Uh, zero sick, which is definitely an uh, you know an unsung hero of the deck. Uh, definitely put in a lot of work just now against Lucan Rock. Uh, count, uh, count, uh, guys, count. The, uh, go back and watch the video again. Count the number of times we use zero sick, and you will see. I believe it was like five times, at least five times, uh, just discarding special energy. Uh, but zero six says choose one of your opponent's tools or special energy uh, attached to a Pokemon in play yours or your opponents and discard it so again it gets rid of special energy off your opponent naturally you would want to discard special energy off yourself but again here we have another card that says you can get rid of anything other your, your tools anything on your team uh so again it's just another one of a very flexible card that gets you out of a lot of bad situations uh next up is our float stone we only run the one Floatstone because we only need the one for our Garbodor. And again, since we can get them back indefinitely, I mean, you essentially have a thousand Floatstones. It just doesn't matter. Uh, but Floatstone takes away the retreat cost of anything and lets you retreat the, anything that this card is attached to for free. Uh, so as you guys can see, Garbodor has a retreat of three, which is almost impossible for us to retreat. Uh, so Floatstone gives us that safety net. Uh, in case your opponent tries to Lysander out Garbodor or tries to stall you out that way. Uh, so Floatstone is just a great card to have. And here is the true uh, MVP of the deck. This card is what makes the whole deck playable. Uh, the A-Spec Trainer, which is you can only have one A-Spec in your entire deck. Uh, and Life Do is like the go-to card. It's the only choice uh, for our Sableye Garbodor. Most people opt for Computer Search. Uh, computer search is, is, is the ultimate version of Ultra Ball. It lets you, uh, it essentially lets you, computer search says discard any two cards from your hand, search your deck for any card, put it in your hand. So it's a better Ultra Ball. Uh, and for that reason, most people choose to play the computer search and probably take out an Ultra Ball because you just don't need it. I you know computer search takes that place. Uh, but in our case, we, we're going to play Life Do. And Life Do says if the, opponent, the, if the Pokemon this card is attached to is knocked out, your opponent takes one fewer prize cards. And as you guys know, uh, when you knock out a non-EX, you only get one prize card. So with Life Do attached to Sableye or Bunnelby or Garbodor, um, you, your opponent takes no prize cards. And since... We, and there have been times where we have to attach life due to Garbodor. Because Garbotoxin says it only needs to have a tool card. It doesn't matter what that tool is. It just needs to have a tool for Garb Garbotoxin to be on. Uh, so if we can turn on Garbotoxin by putting the life due on, then that's fine. We can always get it back later. Because we can just use 0 sick, discard the life due if we need it on Sableye. Uh, double puzzle to get back life due. But essentially our loop is... Um, you use Double Puzzle to get back either Sableye or Energy, but the second card is always going to be Life Do. 
And if you can complete that loop, say, uh, Sableye gets uh, the puzzles. Puzzles get Sableye or energy, whichever you need, uh, and life do. And then you just you attach life do, repeat the loop. Your opponent never takes prize cards, no matter how many times they knock out a Sableye, no matter how many times they knock out your uh, Bonnel B. You can attach it to Shaman even, because uh, if you know your Shaman's going to get knocked out and your opponent has two prize cards left, uh, you can attach it to a Shaman, let your Shaman get knocked out. Now they only take one prize card instead of the two. Uh, again, uh, the new GX mechanic uh, is the same. Uh, is this, it's essentially it's the same as EX's. If your GX gets knocked out, your opponent takes two prizes. Uh, so again, Life Do makes it where your opponent only gets one. So again, Life Do is just a card that has multiple functionalities, can easily mess up your opponent's math and throw off your opponent's entire game. Because if they're going for game and they're only going to take one for a knockout on an EX, then they go, go down to prize card, you know, one prize card, then you end. And you potentially turn the entire game around just by doing that. Uh, but then our next card is, and I forgot to check this number. Uh, all right, so we run two of the Head Ringer Team Flare Hyper Gear. Uh, basically, uh, again, we already went over this, the, the X, this is attached to his attacks, costs one more. Uh, this is actually, again, just to reiterate what I was saying, uh, this card is just great for messing up your opponent's math. Uh, this card is a great hard counter against, uh, you know, the hardest decks for you, for you to beat, which would be Item Lock. Mainly, mainly this card's in here to counter Seismitoad, really. It's just in here to counter Seismitoad. Uh, because Seismitoad has two energy, your opponent, you know, Quaking Punch for 30, your opponent can't play items. And if you can't play items and save like Garbodor, you might as well go ahead and scoop because there's simply nothing you can do. You can try to fight with Team Flare Grunt, you can try to fight with Zero Sick, uh, but once those cards run out, that's it. Game over. You have no other way to get your items back or your supporters back at that point because you can't play Versus Seeker, you can't play anything. And with uh, Head Ringer, you can make it where Seismitoad can't uh, can't get that easy double colorless quaking punch for 30. They don't get that option. And since Seismitoad uh, is a Pokemon with an attack that item locks, your opponent it's, it's simply impossible for your opponent to item lock you on your first turn. You're always going to get one turn of items, which is great. So it always gives you the opportunity to turn off their Seismitoad. Uh, again, a lot of people like to attach Fighting Fury Belts or any, any tool to the Seismitoad, since, since Pokemon can only have one tool, uh, and you can, there's really no way to override it unless you take the one that's currently on it off. So you're, you basically find you know force your opponent to have the removal and head ringer in their hand at the same time. Uh, it's still possible, and with this with this deck, it's extremely easy, especially.